A uh, drop in private consumption is the main reason the Korea Development Institute dropped its growth forecast for this year. Now, this comes as consumers have been spending less since the uh, ferry disaster last month. However, as we reported earlier on, Asia's fourth largest economy posted a record current account surplus in the month of April. Now, the nation's economic picture doesn't look all that clear to non-experts like myself. So let's turn to an expert for his assessment of the Korean economy today. For that, Dr. Yang jun suk joins me live via Skype. Dr. Yang is a professor of economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, the think tank adjusted downward its growth forecast for the Korean economy this year, and uh, the KDI, I believe, is just one of a few institutions that have lowered the growth outlook for this country. Of course, slow consumption had much to do with it. Now, how serious or how long will this economy continue to feel the impact from the ferry disaster? Okay, well, typically, if you have a major disaster like the Seoul incident, uh, you will have reduced consumption for a few weeks to a few months. So I think most uh, economists don't really expect this to run beyond the second and third quarter. But the problem is we did lose a lot of consumption in the second quarter. So that's part of the reason why we're adjusting some of the projections downwards. Uh, but uh, I think uh, second quarter, we will definitely feel the shock from the sailor incident. Third quarter, maybe, but I don't think it will go beyond that. But the uh, year-long figures will have to re reflect the fact that we did have a very weak uh, second quarter. Uh, but Professor Yang, on the macro side, as we uh, just reported earlier on the newscast, the current account surplus hit a record high in April. What does that mean? Uh, a big current account surplus doesn't necessarily mean a healthy economy, does it? Uh, not necessarily. It could be due because the uh, imports have fallen. I haven't seen the uh, April figures exactly yet. Uh, I've been meaning to. Uh, but if it's due to fallen imports more than increase in exports, then that actually means that our economy is not doing as well as we think it should. So uh, really, how concerned should we be about uh, the local currency then? I mean, the robust current account surplus will, uh, of course, lend further support to the Korean won, which is, uh, mind you, already 3.3% against the U.S. dollar up this year. Okay, well, we should definitely be worried that the uh, uh, more powerful won will hit exports. But the uh, reports that's been coming out for the last five years or so uh, mentioned that the uh, uh, Korean exports are not as affected as much by exchange rates as it, it used to be. Uh, I think that's partially because we've moved on to higher value-added products like the smartphones, where we don't have as many competitors as we used to have in the 1990s and early 2000s. Uh, so uh, it will have an impact, but it will probably be less an impact than uh, what we're used to. Well, uh, earlier on, the Korean government said it expects the uh, financial authorities to really keep the, uh, the won rate, won dollar rate, at about 1020 level. Uh, do we expect another government intervention should that rate uh, soar beyond that point? I think, uh, I think at least for the uh, next quarter or so, yes, because Korean government does, uh, it's, uh, it's partially a matter of level. It's also partially a problem of change. If it changes too quickly, that adds a lot of uncertainties, especially for small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, so uh, the, it'll be the uncertainty rather than the uh, weak, uh, stronger one, which has more, which can cause more problems. So I think uh, they will try to slow down the uh, speed of the appreciation, not necessarily the appreciation itself, but maybe just the speed. So. Uh, I think in the second and maybe in the third quarter, if, it try, if, it, if the rates seem to fall much more below 1020, uh, then the government will probably intervene. Now let's talk about a uh, global economy and its impact on the Korean economy, the slowdown in China, which of course is Korea's biggest export market, and uh, an uneven recovery in the global economy have largely uh, cooled investment, investor sentiment in recent weeks. Now, do we expect the Korean economy to achieve the 3.7% target this year? I mean, uh, in your view, Professor Yang, what's your short to long-term forecast of the Korean economy? 
I think it'll come close, but maybe probably a bit under, uh, because when they made the projection, uh, we didn't really fully uh, account for unforeseen incidents like the Sailor incident. Uh, but uh, the year is still less than half over, and the other long-term factors I think were uh, figured into these projections. So I don't. So I think it'll underperform, but not by, not by that much. And how large of an impact, how big of an impact are, is the Korean economy going to feel from, from the external factors, from what will be happening in China, the U.S., the recovery rates there? Okay, well, uh, the fact that U.S. seems to be recovering, though they're uh, shaky at the moment, uh, I think it'll probably be a good news. I think overall things have become a lot more stable than uh, things were last year. So that'll definitely help the Korean economy, uh, but I think the uh, the domestic situation has become a bit more unstable. That's partially because of the Seoul incident. I think it's also partially because of the elections. I think after the elections, we'll see how a uh, political environment in Korea settles down, and then we can get a better uh, forecast of what the domestic part of the GDP for the uh, remaining year will look like. Well, Dr. Yang jin Sup, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea, thank you so much for speaking with us. Oh, thank you for having me.